So, hi, hello again, everyone. Again, a short uh, technical test before I start the live stream. I think uh, it should start now. I'm still checking my web browser because there's usually a short delay until you're able um, to hear me. Just a second. Ah, uh, yeah, now it's starting. Okay, I think here we go. Uh -huh. We are ready to go. I think uh, I'm now live. Uh, I want to wish you a nice uh, Saturday again. Welcome again to the Saturday um, live stream here. Um, yes, uh, let's always do a little sound check because last week, uh, unfortunately, the sound was not loud enough. Um, yeah, great. Uh, and uh, it has already become tradition every week uh, that we quickly go through the list uh, in the chat uh, to say hi all over the world, all across the world. Okay, so we've got, uh, yes, uh, people from New Zealand, um, uh, from New York City, from Rio Grande Valley in Texas, from the Netherlands, from Mexico, from Germany, um, yeah, from Bulgaria. Wow, that's really nice. Uh, Netherlands again. Um, okay, Michigan. Yes, welcome again um, today. You see it over here? No, on the other side, um, over there. Um, this is a centrifuge. Um, and today I would like uh, to show you the centrifuge. In the um, description below, there is a link to a YouTube video uh, where I reviewed this centrifuge. But today I actually want to um, use it and I would like uh, to uh, centrifuge four samples. And uh, yeah, and then of course I'm going to put it under the microscope. Okay, um, occasionally I'm going to interrupt myself to read the comments on the side here. Okay, so yeah, from Michigan, Spain, okay, U United States, from Hungary, from India, hello across the world. It's uh, really great that there's so many people um, out there who are interested in, in microscopy. So I'm going to get started. Um, Right away, I'm going to show you again my desk uh, over here. And yeah, and uh, I'm going to show you what uh, we've got here. Um, we need a scale. This is a, um, yeah, a precision scale because what we have to do is when we centrifuge the samples, when we spin them, they have to be balanced. So we need a scale here to balance it. Over here, I have uh, some tubes, uh, some centrifugation tubes. These are disposable tubes um, that I'll be using to separate uh, and to concentrate uh, the sample. Look what I've got here. <laughs> I bought this bag just recently. Yeah, there are hundred of them in here. <laughs> That's uh, really um, way more than enough. Um, so, and uh, they have uh, 15 milliliters. Um, however, the smaller ones of 10 milliliters also work. Okay, um, then I have my samples over there. I have a whole bunch of uh, disposable pipettes that I will be using. And uh, this one over here, this is actually um, a tube um, inside the centrifuge. Um, and this is actually the, yeah, the holder. Yeah, so this one goes in here like this and then it, it spins around. I'm going to show you now um, the centrifuge again. And um, I've got the centrifuge standing on the floor next to me um, because um, yeah, it's easier this way and uh, with the electricity it's better. And this means that I have to, uh, because I have an, a separate power supply there and it's uh, not so, um, it's a little bit more stable. Um, so what I have to do is if I want to operate the centrifuge, I have to disappear a little bit uh, like this. Yeah, and then I'm back. Okay, so this is basically something uh, that I'll be doing um, every now and then. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you the samples, but let me get the tube back. Okay, here I am again. Um, so um, I'll be uh, looking at the following here. Uh, this here is um, a no, you cannot see it because I forgot to switch back to the desk view. Okay, so this is a, a uh, yeah a water sample that I collected today today in the afternoon um, from a local small small stream. Um, a little bit of sediment in here. You can see that the stuff floating here. I did not try it out yet. Okay, so I did not uh, uh, centrifuge this yet. But what you can see um, is is that uh, if you let it stand, then the the sand is going to settle down quite quickly. So um that's not so interesting. But what I want to do is. I want to concentrate whatever is uh, floating around in the water here right now. Okay, um, so this basically is uh, the the thing that I'd like to do. Uh, and uh, over here, I have got uh, another um, water sample. I'm going to show you how I obtained this. There are also some algae in here that I would like to concentrate. Um, I have got yes, <laughs> my favorite drink. I'm going to centrifuge a coffee. Um, because uh, it's also quite interesting. Um, and um, I've over here, I've got a sand sample. 
um, yeah, here it is, um, from a beach in northern Germany. I visited uh, northern Germany, uh, the so-called uh, 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 the Wadden Sea, um, um, I, um, several months ago, and I took a sand sample along um, to uh, basically, uh, and I would like to extract some of the diatoms here. Um, so I'm going to uh, basically, um, yeah, these are going to be the four samples here. I'm going to quickly go through again the comments here. Okay, hello from India, from South Te Texas, from Central California. Medical research today? No, no medical research. I will not be centrifuging any blood. I'll um, be centrifuging simply some water samples today. Okay, and uh, there's yeah 7.30 a.m. here in OZ, kind regards. <laughs> yes, well, where I am, it's uh, in the evening. So all across the world. I'll be starting off with the following. Um, I want to uh, put... Uh, yeah, let's say the coffee over here. Um, and let's uh, say that I would like to put this water sample here under the microscope. And uh, I'm going to show you now how I obtained uh, this sample here. Because this one is a little bit different than the other ones. I've got over here a jar with, uh, yeah, with algae. Okay. Um, and uh, what I've done is, is I've simply taken out, if you look, if you go in here, look at this. Uh, these are Ah, look, isn't this fun? Uh, they're all green and therefore um, it appears transparent <laughs> because of the green screen. That's a little bit funny. Okay. Um, yeah, it's invisible for you. Look on my sweater. Yeah, because uh, the filter removes, um, removes this, but there are algae here. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to put, put this in here. Uh, okay. Here, now you're, now you're able to see it. And I'm simply going to rinse out whatever is in here. Okay, so I always, yeah, and that's pretty much it. I will be returning, it's now back here. Okay, and uh, basically there are now, I don't know, yeah, whole bunch of algae floating around in here. And I would like to concentrate those and uh, I would like to see now what's what's uh, in, in here. And uh, of course, I also need some, some tissue paper because when I'm playing around with water, then of course things might become wet. So um, I'll do that now. Um, I'll spin this sample here and the coffee. And um, in order to do that, um, I'm, I need my scale. Okay. So um, I'm still simply going to fill in a little bit of coffee. Okay. You know what? Um, yeah. It's actually good coffee. I almost uh, feel like drinking it, but in the lab, one should not drink anything. So here we go. I'm simply going to take um, some of the coffee out here. I'm going to put it in here. Okay. Okay, here we go. Maybe I, I should move it over a little bit so that it's, you can see it a little bit better. Okay. And then let's have a look. Uh, yeah, how coffee looks. It is a little bit more of a, a proof of concept than anything else. Yeah. And um, the, um, I'll be using uh, this one on one side and I need now um, one that has exactly the same mass on the other side. So what I'm going to be doing is I put on the cap, okay, I put it on here and I turn it on and I simply set it to zero. Okay, but when you turn it on and yeah, I don't even have to press Terra, terra because it's, uh, yeah, and it goes all the way to the hun a hundredth of a gram and yeah, that's basically now calibrated for the coffee and uh, I now need to add um, over here exactly the same am mass um, and I'm going to change my pipette for this mm, yeah and I'll be using this water sample over here and uh, I have to add exactly the same amount so that um, it's going to be balanced that's really important because um, Otherwise, it's going to start vibrating. And this is not an expensive uh, centrifuge, okay? Uh, the centrifuge was actually ridiculously cheap. I paid around 60 euros, so which is around 60 US dollars, new. I got it from eBay, so it's not the best quality, okay? Um, but it does its job, and uh, but uh, I'm not quite sure um, yeah, if it's able to withstand uh, a lot of, uh, yeah, if it's very imbalanced. So that means I want to really precisely, oh, I made a mistake. Just a second. Did I weigh the whole thing with a cap or not? That's an important one. Yeah, so this was with, with a cap. Okay, with a blue cap. Okay, so this means I also have to add the blue cap over here. I nearly forgot that, so now it's too heavy. But that's actually, this uh, small difference can make a, a huge impact. 
So I'm going to put this back here. That's of course again too much. Okay, be patient, patient, patient. Maybe another drop, another drop, another drop. Here we go. Ha, got it. Okay. Yeah, so um, both tubes now weigh the same. That's important. Okay. And uh, now I'm going to give it a five minute spin. Okay, or 10 minutes. So, um, and uh, while I'm going to uh, spin the whole thing, I'm going to be answering again a few comments and a few questions because this is now basically where we need a little bit of patience. So I'm going to switch over now to the centrifuge. And the centrifuge um, has two knobs. One can, uh, for one a timer, um, and the other one is uh, the speed. And I've got now 4,000 RPMs, okay? Um, so, what I would like to um, simply do now is I'm going to put uh, both of these um, into the yeah into the centrifuge and then let's hope that we're able to to find something. Okay, where is the thing here? Okay, I got everything in there. This little plastic uh, yeah container is also in, already in there. So um, you might also hear the, the the sound a little bit. It's now spinning, and uh, I'm, I hope that you're still able to hear me. Maybe it's a little too loud. So I'm going to, yeah, it's louder than I hoped it to, <laughs> to be. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm going to answer now some question. Okay, the cap, the cap. Um, are there any advantages or disadvantages with increasing the magnification by swapping the out the eyepieces versus a Paolo lens? I use a ring light, so using a Barlow lens is kind of a nuisance. Thank you. Um, I don't know if you're referring, if you say a ring light, then I think you're referring to stereo microscopes. Yeah. Um, generally, um, I think that the magnification should only be changed with the objective because this gives the best uh, resolution. Yeah. Will the vibration of the centrifuge also happen if you use a hand centrifuge or are the uh, margins less important? Well, with a hand centrifuge, the spinning. Uh, speed is not as high okay the rotation there are far less rpms and therefore the forces are much lower so the faster that the centrifuge spins the more the better it has to be balanced because the forces are really high okay otherwise and with a hand centrifuge you won't be able to uh, spin it up uh, so much um, and therefore if there is a little bit it should also be balanced but um, you the tolerances are much higher okay so the next one, do you have an idea how a regular person as me could get a DIC microscope? You can, I know of people who have uh, bought uh, used ones um, and uh, they are much cheaper or you can play around with oblique illumination and oblique illumination is uh, much cheaper and gives you a similar effect. I say similar, it's not quite the same, um, but I would say that if you optimize the um, oblique illumination, you can also get quite far. Otherwise you have to use, uh, if you do not want to spend so much money, you have to use uh, used microscopes. Yeah? Are there some cheaper ones or are any advice? Well, um, what you can do is, is um, I, a few months ago, I got a, an offer from the Dutch company from the Netherlands, Euromax. And there the cheapest uh, yeah, DIC microscope still costed several thousand. Okay, um, but I've heard of some someone who was able to put together a used microscope uh, with DIC for significantly less. Um, so it is a little bit of luck um, whether you're able to get something, but I would say then you should uh, shop in the used microscope market. Okay, the sound is still okay. That's good. Okay, very good. Okay, what are we looking for? Uh, this is a yeah. Um, the the coffee is a, a simply a demonstration of principle, um, so that maybe we're, we're able to see a few coffee particles. And then the other one, I hope to be able to concentrate some algae. I did not try this specimen yet. Okay, so um, it's going to be a little bit of a, an uncertainty for me as well. Okay, um, so centrifuge volume is no problem, that's good. Okay, I, I think that's also because of the microphone here, which is a little bit uh, directional here. I have an old Carl Zeiss microscope that has an extra lens that can flip over the, um, the condenser. What is this for? Um, 
I think uh, some condensers like my microscope, um, if you use the low power magnification, like the four times, then you do not get a full field of a view and you can flip it um, away um, so that the condenser um, is uh, appropriate uh, for the objective. So my microscope, the current one, which is a new one, also has the same thing. Um, I have to flip out the lens if I want to use the low power objective. Yeah, so I think that's just a, yeah, uh, for this purpose. Okay, so very good. I have already uh, broken tubes in the centrifuge. Yes, so have I. Uh, while I was still working in a laboratory, um, I accidentally, I was supposed to spin it, I don't know, uh, 1,500 uh, RPMs, which is quite low, and I spun it 15,000 times. I got a mystic by a factor of 10, and I broke the tubes. Yeah, so it's a little bit risky indeed, okay? The centrifuge was quite cheap. It was around 60 euros or 60 dollars new on eBay. Um, it was one of the cheapest ones I could get. Um, it does its job. Um, yeah, that's all I can say. It's probably not the best one, but centrifuges otherwise can be quite expensive. Um, but this one is, is fine for, for, for me. Yeah. If you centrifuge for five minutes with your electric centrifuge, how long do you have to centrifuge using a hand centrifuge? And do the specimens determine how long you have to centrifuge? Yes, this is important. Um, if you, um, uh, if the thing is the following, that the density of the specimens has to be higher than the density of the water. Otherwise, it's not going to work, okay? Um, otherwise, if it's lower than the, they're actually gonna start floating to the top if the density is less. That's, by the, by the way, that's also used uh, sometimes uh, to, uh, to, um, uh, to separate microplastics uh, because microplastics um, are sometimes less dense than the water and they start to, to float, okay? Um, so with a hand centrifuge, um, because you cannot get the same speed, therefore um, the density, um, you, you're probably not able to separate uh, um, specimens that are uh, yeah, very, that have a very similar density as water. Yeah? So there is, is of course a limit. Yeah? Uh, in my school they use an ultra centrifuge which spins even faster for algae. Yep. Okay. Um, it's quite expensive for me here in Brazil. Yeah, but I would say um, you can, <laughs> I, I'm honest. I have made myself a centrifuge using an electric drill. It is possible. A hand drill, an electric hand drill. Um, I think I might even have made a video on this. Um, what do you do? Um, I don't have a hand drill with me, uh, but basically what I've done is I've mounted a round uh, wooden disc, plywood disc um, on my hand drill. And then uh, I connected the, uh, yeah, using some holes, I was able to connect the tubes and then the tubes were spinning like this. Yeah, and in the middle I had the hand drill. Okay, that, that, that actually also works. It's a little bit dangerous, okay? Uh, because you've got a, a fast spinning disc, yeah? But it's, it's easy to make. Um, uh, so, um, uh, yeah, uh, and, and it's, it's uh, quite uh, cheap to make because um, electric hand drills, like for example, that you also use for um, for screws, yeah, screwdrivers, electric screwdrivers, they spin fast enough sometimes uh, so that you're able to do that. So uh, there is a possibility to improvise this. Okay. Um, can I use a 4,000 speed centrifuge for 12,000 speed? Well, it won't spin that quickly. Okay. I have collected some pond water with a large number of euglena, but they're dying regardless of the sunlight provided. What should I do to keep them alive? Um, that's an interesting one. Um, I don't know what it could be. Maybe uh, if you put uh, new direct sunlight is not, not always a good idea. The heat goes up maybe too much or ultraviolet light. So keep it bright, but not in direct sunlight, okay? Just searched on eBay. There are a number of similar looking centrifuge. What to look out for when buying one? Um, well, I would say the important uh, characteristics are the spinning speed. This one goes maximum 4,000 and works for me fine. Um, I would say that's pretty much it. And, and, and maybe the size of the tubes, that's important because uh, many um, centrifuges, the smaller ones are used to separate DNA and they have very small, they're just using very small tubes, okay? Um, so you should use one that is able to accept 10 to 15 milliliter uh, yeah, tubes like this here. To centrifuge bacteria, would you use less dense medium? Could you use alcohol um, or other solvent? If you use alcohol, you're going to break open the bacteria because you're lysing the, uh, the cell membrane of the bacteria, so you won't get full cells anymore, okay? 
Um, so um, generally, what we uh, when I've been centrifuging bacteria, we simply used water or simply salt water. Why salt water? Because this was the, the medium that the bacteria were uh, suspended in for osmotic balance. But um, essentially, with an ultra centrifuge, we were able to separate bacteria. But it might even be possible with this one. Okay. But I think it, it, it might be enough now. I don't know why it's not stopping. Maybe I kind of set the timer a little bit too much. Okay. Okay, so now it's spinning down and now there's also a little bit less noise. What is the diameter of the tubes you're using in a centrifuge? That's an interesting question. It looks a little bit like one and a half centimeters, I guess. I don't have a ruler with me now. Um, but uh, it's uh, one, I guess it must be one and a half centimeters around, I would guess. Yeah, look, uh, I'm, I'm going to show you the desk, the diameter here. Yeah, it's, it's about the size of a finger. Yeah, so... Yeah. So and uh, yeah, let's uh, let's have a look now. Okay. Um, so uh, what are the time? Um, I live in Iraq. Okay. So yeah. So this means that uh, if you basically are living in a place where you cannot, uh, um, where there are no centrifuges available, then I would suggest that you uh, try experimenting by making one with an electric drill. Okay. So let's let's have a look. I'm a little bit um, excited myself now to see. So I'm going to switch over now to the desk view again, okay? And uh, let's have a look um, over here with the coffee. Uh, it's difficult to see if there is something here, but here it's easier to see. Do you see this dark uh, thing here? That's called a pellet, okay? It's called a pellet. Um, I'm going to try the following. I hope uh, today in the morning I did try the coffee and I was able to concentrate the coffee a little bit. I don't know if uh, I'm able to... Um, have a pellet here. So I'm going to simply decant it. I've got a, a, a jar next to me where I'm just throwing it away. The pellet in the morning of the coffee was quite, uh, quite small. So it has to be careful. Um, if you just uh, throw it, uh, dump it out, then there is the danger um, a little bit that uh, it's going to start, but I don't see it. Oh, I see a pellet. Very good. Okay. And because the coffee is so dark, it's, it's difficult to actually. Okay. And uh, here there is, do you see this here? Okay. That's the solid part. Okay. That's the solid part of, um, yeah. Um, of the coffee and what I'll be doing now is, is um, I'll just put it to the side and uh, I'll put it under the microscope in just a minute and uh, I'm also going to immediately remove uh, the liquid here because if there are any moving organisms in here then they're probably of course going to start uh, <laughs> going away again so I'm going to yeah, also carefully remove Okay, so this pellet is actually quite much larger. I'm going to leave a little bit of, of water in there, okay? Uh, because what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to simply resuspend the pellet by, by tapping it, okay? And uh, yeah, whatever is in there, I hope some algae, I mean, it does look a little bit green, so I do expect uh, some algae al algae in here. And uh, I'm going to have, a, I'm gonna give it a try, okay? Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to have again a look at a few of the comments. Um, uh, yeah, is it centrifuge 122? Uh, it's 220, uh, it's 220. Uh, I don't know if it, there, I don't know if there's an, a setting possible, but it came with a 220 volt plug, so you have to check. Yeah. Um, so uh, I have a 1000, 2000 RPM high RPM drill. I think I'm going to try to improvise a centrifuge adapter. Yeah. So what I've done is, is, um, is the following. <laughs> 
Um, uh, again, I, I made a, a, a disc, um, a larger one than this one, uh, uh, out of wood, okay? You gotta be really careful that this is uh, evenly balanced. And then I used some cable binders um, to actually put the tubes in. Uh, actually, I used smaller tubes, okay? Um, so that is uh, somehow how I held, uh, yeah, but you have, no, actually, it's, you really have to make sure that the tubes, they are really, uh, yeah, otherwise you have them flying out, okay? That, that's really important that you really make sure that um, um, they're really locked into place, otherwise because of the centrifugal force, they're gonna start flying out and then it, that's kind of dangerous maybe, okay? Yeah. Um, so, um, let, let, let's, uh, let's give it a try. Um, I am confident that there is something to be seen here. I don't know if it's very interesting what we're gonna see, <laughs> but at least we're gonna see something. So, um, and... Uh, Let's take a, a small drop here, goes on the slide, okay, and uh, I put this away. Cover glass goes on top where my cover glasses, here they are. Okay, where is it? I have to get one of them. Here we go. Usually the cover glasses are a little bit dirty. Let me see. Uh, it's uh, so I'm just going to quickly use a little microfiber cloth to, to kind of wipe, dry wipe it. And uh, let's give it a try, okay? This is the, and I'm going to quickly also wipe the, all of the coffee and up. Oh. Drop the pipette, mess everywhere. So um, yeah, I'm going to switch over to the uh, to the microscope view now. Okay, it's the 40 times. Look, I've got a nice li little arrow as well. I'm going to move this out of the way. Um, let's have a look. And uh, yeah, we see something. Um, ha! Now uh, there was someone who asked about flipping out the the lens. Look what I'm doing right now. Where is this? The, I'm flipping out now the yeah the condenser lens as well and I have to remove the prism to get a full view. Okay, so that's basically what I'm yeah, able to see and not a lot, okay? So I'm going to flip this back in again. I'm going up with the magnification, hoping to be able to see something more interesting. I'm going to close the condenser a little bit. I'm gonna put the prism in here. Okay, well, still, let's go up a little bit more. Maybe I was actually hoping to maybe finding some 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 diatoms or so. There's a little bit of movement going on, but honestly, I'm not so super excited. I was actually hoping a little bit some something more interesting. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, lots yeah some. There is a little bit of movement going on. Where are, my, where, where are all of the diatoms? Okay, 40 times. Oh, here it's getting a little bit better. Yes, now I see some diatom shells as well. Okay, a little bit of movement is going on here as well. So uh, again, some, um, some comments. I uh, will be taking soil samples and using a centrifuge to see percentages of clay, silt, etc. Is 4000 RPM good? I mean, honestly, I, I, I think you might even not need a centrifuge if you're patient enough, then maybe they will actually settle down over time. Yeah. yeah. Good morning from the Philippines, okay? So the main purpose of a centrifuge is to concentrate and separate the samples, that's correct, yes. Especially um, if uh, the samples are so small that uh, they like to stay suspended. Um, in, in the water and then when you basically centrifuge them, you're increasing the gravity so that uh, everything that's more dense will actually uh, yeah, uh, settle down into the pellet. Yeah. If you uh, centrifuge it with a too high of a speed, you might actually also kill some organisms. But yeah, there is some, some stuff going on here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, a couple of years ago, I've tried to improvise a centrifuge by sticking tubes to a fan in hopes of to bleach, to bleach diatoms. Worked fine for a couple of minutes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think maybe an electric drill might be easier instead of a fan because an electric drill sp uh, spins a little bit faster. Is the radius of the centrifuge path uh, deterministic to the force exerted on the particle? Could one make up for lower RPM by increasing the radius? Um, I think you need, um, it is the, 
oh gosh physics has been a, a quite uh, some time ago but uh, the there is a formula actually uh, where um, actually which uh, where you're able to calculate the force okay um, can centrifuges with a higher rpm do something different than this one can't do yes centrifuges with a higher rpm are able to separate objects that um, are um, uh, less dense okay so here the objects have to be kind of uh, yeah more dense than significantly more dense than the water so for example if you have a, a centrifuge with higher rpms then you can actually also separate uh, or centrifuge and sediment down a dna yeah uh, this uh, but you need to go to much higher speeds but uh, that's not something that we want to do um, here we're just uh, happy and fine with this here okay yeah so and uh, mitotic cells, yes, maybe some of them are dividing. Okay, centrifuge machines are pretty cheap in India. I have purchased one with pretty good quality at 32 euros. Ah, very good. Yeah, I think there is, is a lot of, um, how do you say, uh, price politics going on because maybe the same device is sold, of course, for different uh, amounts in the different countries of the world. Yeah. Yeah, so this is uh, 40 times. Let's go down up all the way to, let's say, 60 times. And uh, I'm also going to change over the DIC filter here a little bit. Yeah. And uh, yeah, this is basically a, 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 some, a, 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 a way that you can do a little bit of exploring as well. Now, if you don't have a centrifuge, what is possible is, of course, is that you uh, simply let the the, uh, the sample stand for some time, but uh, the moving organisms, of course, uh, they might immediately float away and, and, and go away again, okay? So for this reason, centrifuges might have uh, um, an advantage. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm also gonna put the coffee under the microscope now to see the coffee is, is probably gonna be a little bit less interesting. Um, it's a, a, a little bit of a proof of concept that I would like to show you. So um, I need another um, slide. Actually, totally forgot uh, that I actually did make my own centrifuge some time ago with a drill. Um, I should have uh, also brought it along. Um, for this one here, is, I think this was the coffee. Yep. So I'm, I'm also going to resuspend it. Uh, we're just going to see the coffee grain particles. So there's nothing, nothing uh, totally exciting here. Okay. Um, maybe I should have shown you this one first. <laughs> So let's have a look. And uh, yeah, a uh, cover glass goes on top. Again, up, I dropped it. Uh, here, here you see better. And let's put this uh, under the microscope. And uh, where is it? The here, this one over here. Let's go down with the light intensity. Just take this one out, put the next one in. Yeah, and we see some coffee particles. And that's it. Yeah. Well, that's the stuff that we're drinking. Yeah. So what else are we able to find here? I don't think uh, that we're going to find anything uh, of particular interest here, but still it's uh, kind of uh, interesting, I think, to see uh, the things that can be found in coffee. And these are probably all ground up, uh, microscopic ground up, ground up coffee beans and some other interesting structures. After all, uh, coffee is a natural product, so you shouldn't be um, surprised to find some plant materials here, like for example, these here. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you uh, vary the RPM of that centrifuge? Yes, yes, you can. Um, the RPM has two knobs. One is a timing timer knob and the other one is an RPM, which goes up all the way to 4,000 times. And I simply had it now at the maximum setting, okay? Can you get these decent results using just a hand centrifuge? Yes, of, um, I, I tell you, um, I've used a hand centrifuge before and what I've done is, is I've uh, centrifuged uh, the pollen of honey using a hand centrifuge. What you do is, is you, buy, you can buy some honey, you dilute it with water, otherwise it's too thick. And then I was spinning it with a hand centrifuge and I could extract and concentrate the pollen. It worked. 
I've done it before. As a matter of fact, I think I even made some years ago a video. Either I think I think it was not in this channel. It was in my main channel. I think uh, if you Google and search for it, uh, poly, uh, pollen um, extraction from honey. I think uh, uh, actually show you there how I use the hand centrifuge. Good, good point. Uh, I might actually put the link to that video into the description afterwards. Yeah. Um, would phase contrast DSC dark field or oil immersion improve an image? Well, all of these uh, uh, all of these methods or techniques, phase contrast, DSC dark field, and so on, um, are actually um, suitable for different specimens. So you cannot say that one is automatically better than the other. Um, different specimens can be um, yeah, observed best in, in different uh, techniques. So for example, bacteria can be observed very well in phase contrast. I think water samples with larger organisms do not look so nice in phase contrast because it's too thick. Um, so bright field is much better because it also retains the natural colors better. So you cannot really say that one technique is automatically better than the other. Okay. Greetings from Hungary, okay? What is a hand centrifuge? Yes, a hand centrifuge is a, um, a device and you, you spin it by hand and there is a gearing system. And when you spin it by hand and there is a thing that is rotating, it's like a propeller um, and you the tubes are rotating uh, and, and you just got to be careful because if you touch it, of course, it's gonna you're going to hit yourself. So in that sense, it's a little bit dangerous, but you just have a, you rotate it by hand and it's spinning. Yeah. And you uh, connect it to a table. You have to screw it to your table using a clamp and then you can spin it uh, using, uh, using your hand and it, it works also quite fine. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, I wonder just for fun, is it centrifuge could separate out fat out of gold mill? Um, that is an interesting one. Fat is less dense than water. So I guess it might be possible maybe by making the fat float to the top. I don't know. Okay. Um, can the glass slides be used again? Okay. Just a second. I'll show you something. Ooh. I think now somehow the, the connection <laughs> was a little bit lost. Just a second. I am going to, I hope that you're able to, yep. Okay. For whatever reason, the webcam uh, yeah, disappeared. Look, this is what I wanted to show you. This is how I collect my old slides and then I wash them again because in many cases uh, it's possible to, to actually reuse them. Yeah? So I have uh, simply drop all of my old slides in here and I wash them and, and those that don't really can become clean I simply throw away okay uh, okay aloha from Hawaii oh hello how does it make any difference if you use plastic tubes or glass tubes honestly um, I don't know of any any glass tubes really um, you, you're talking about test tubes Ooh, I don't know if this is a good idea. Um, the forces can be quite high and uh, um, and the plastic is a little bit flexible. So I'm, I'd be kind of worried maybe that maybe the glass might break. I can imagine if, for, for example, I'm going to show you something. Just a second. If there is, if you use a, a glass test tube, I mean, I don't know. And, and there's some, some, some uh, uh, maybe a grain of sand in there and then it's pushed down, then maybe it might crack. Okay. I mean, I've uh, been doing a centrifuging also with glass tubes, um, but at, at a very low speed. So um, yeah, but mo most of the time we use, I use plastic. Yeah. Um, do you also wash the cover slides? Yes, I do. Um, but only superficially um, so uh, some if, uh, yeah um, and if they can be cleaned easily I just reuse them some of them break um, and uh, then I've got for example pretty large uh, cover slides again uh, cover glasses as well they're kind of big here um, and uh, yeah um, I think it's a pity to simply throw them away you always have to be a little bit uh, careful that you don't uh, do that with infectious material Okay, um, attach drill to crank of hand centrifuge. If you can do that, I don't know. But I think that no, I don't know. Um, the thing is, is that the drill really spins very quickly. And the hand centrifuge is actually designed um, to be rotated slowly. And then the gearing is such in such a way that the tubes spin very quickly. So, uh, so I think that a drill might be too fast for a hand centrifuge, um, I would guess, okay. Uh, maybe I will take a water sample and centrifuge to see if there is uh, many microplastic contamination. Yes, this is actually done. Um, that's something that I'm also working on. If you want to check for microplastic contamination, you have to add salt to the water. Why? 
because the salt makes the water more dense and by centrifuging it the plastic the microplastic starts to float to the top okay because the plastic density is more or less similar to water so it will not go down when you centrifuge it okay but if you now make the water more dense by adding salt to the water then the plastic is going to start to float to the top i read this somewhere i did not try it out yet okay but if you google around then there are indeed certain standardized uh, methods and protocols um, how you can separate microplastics okay so this is coffee um yeah um we had a look at some algae and now i would like to do the following um what were the what, what were the other two i would um, like to um spin again for a couple of minutes i'm going to take this away here um i would like to spin um for a couple of minutes uh, the other two samples that i have and um yeah, so this is basically the sample that I collected uh, yeah, bef today in the afternoon from, yeah, from a small river. And uh, I'm just going to do the same thing. And then I would like to uh, put, uh, uh, yeah, hopefully be able to extract some diatoms uh, from this sand sample over here. So I'm going to do the following. I'm going to simply clean up everything a little bit here to make some more space. Because I'm always kind of worried of knocking over some of my jars. So um, also the... It goes into the uh, yeah recycling container. So um, number one, as before, I've got my tubes here, and this is a tube. Where is my other tube? So these are two empty tubes, um, and I'm going to simply put this one over here, and I'm going to simply use um, a pipette. Where is my pipette? And I'm going to rinse this pipette. Over here as well, I've got also some, a yeah, small glass of water next uh, to me uh, to, to rinse it. I'm going to simply add those. Now look at here, you might not be able to see it, but there is some sand now collecting on the bottom. Um, but any other uh, microorganisms or algae or I don't know um, what is in here uh, might still be here in the top. And I know that there must be something here in the top because it's not completely clear. Okay, so um, let's, let's try this. Uh, so I'm going to simply add... A little bit of, um, I, I know I did not switch on the, the scale yet, but that's okay. I'm going to simply set it to zero uh, later on. And um, so I hope that the pellet is going to be large enough here. I'm going to maybe use a little bit more water now. To make sure that there is enough uh, sample material in there. So, and uh, again, Okay, uh, what are samples? Do you use the plastic tubes only once for the centrifuge? Um, no, I reuse them as well. And I will tell you why I reuse them. Um, I reuse them because uh, I'm not uh, doing this uh, for, for medical purposes or for, for research purposes or so on. Okay, um, I simply rinse them out and uh, then, um, and if they're reasonably clean, uh, then I reuse them. Um, if I see that there is still some, some dirt uh, sticking in there, which is difficult to remove, then I simply throw it away. Um, so I, I'm in that sense uh, quite uh, pragmatic. Um, again, it doesn't have to be sterile. It's not. I'm not using this for medical purposes, and I just want to put stuff under the microscope. So for this reason, I can be a little bit flexible. And yeah. So let's do the following. Um, yeah, this is now set to zero. Okay. So I put this uh, to the side, and now um, yeah, I uh, I should have done this uh, earlier. Where I'm going to uh, take uh, yeah, I need actually two tubes. What I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to take a small sample here and I'm going to suspend it in water first. Um, you can see that there is some discoloration here. So maybe there is some, some, al some algae, maybe there's some algae growing here. And now I just realized that I do not have a, oh, here it is. I'm going to take a small sample, put it in here and add a little bit of water to this. Okay, so um, I'm going to rinse this again. Okay, so, so, um, and I'm going to um, add a little bit of water to here. Okay. And uh, I'm going to add then the sand to this uh, water. And then I'm going to centrifuge uh, the water without the sand because the sand is... Uh, uh, quite large and it kind of disturbs a little bit. 
Okay. Um, yeah. And where is, yeah, I'm just going to use this here. I just realized that having a spatula would not be a bad idea. <laughs> but so far I didn't uh, use one. So. So let's do this here. And then let's hope that uh, I'm able to. Okay, I made a mistake, people. What mistake did I make? Hmm? You will never guess. Oh, my mistake is, is that I prepared. Th th this one is tap water. And I pre 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 prepared salt water. I do not want to put salt water organisms into tap water. Okay? Osmotic issues. But uh, today I prepared salt water and I forgot about it. So, again, we're going to do this again. I'm going to dump this away. <laughs> okay? And I'm going to now use the prepared salt water. It's a 3.8% salt water solution because it's marine water. And I do not want to damage any microorganisms by putting it into tap water because um, they're not used to tap water. Okay? Osmosis. <laughs> so, again, <laughs> so let's put this in here. <laughs> Probably wouldn't have made a big difference anyway, because that diatom shells uh, um, are not living any anymore anyway, but still, just to make sure. Ah, oh, it's kind of difficult. It, it got stuck in here somehow. So I think, but I think it, sh it should be okay. No, Let me, I want to have a little bit more just to make sure that there is enough sample material in there. Why is this so difficult to get out? It was actually in the today in the morning when I tried this, it was actually much easier. Of course, I tested this because of course I want to be a little bit successful as well. <laughs> I don't want to do something here and then not be able to see anything at all. Okay. Yeah, but I guess uh, we're going to leave it here like this. Okay. Um, so this goes back here and um, yeah, I simply suspend whatever is in there. I wait a little bit until the sand grains settle down. Okay. Um, and then um, I put uh, put this into, yeah, into the tube. Uh, not to forget the cap, obviously. <laughs> here, here we go. And uh, yeah, I, I think I have to reset the whole thing here. This was the first tube. I have to go to on. Okay. Now we put this one in here. Cap is important. And let's try it again. Okay. So I hope I have enough water now. And otherwise I'm going to add a little bit of salt water later on. So. Eh, might be a... Yeah. Not enough, not a problem. Uh, I'm still needing, I still need around four grams. So let's add a little bit more here. So, I'm not talking a lot now because I'm concentrating. Because if the centrifuge is not balanced, uh, still not enough, you might have, uh, yeah, the forces can be quite high and you might have some parts flying around. Then <laughs> I don't want that. <laughs> so almost, 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 almost. Ha, that's good enough. Okay. Yep. So here we go. Um, lid goes on top and before I put it into the, okay, now I have to kind of, ooh, how do we remember this? 
Um, this one here is uh, the permanent marker. So this one over here, that is the sand sample. Okay, so just put put in S, S for sand, so that I know what is what. Okay, so um, maybe there are still a few more questions here. Uh, maybe it will take water samples and centrifuge. Do you use the plastic tubes only once? I'll answer this. Uh, milk and fat, the cap. Could alcohol and water be separated by centrifuging it? No, definitely not. Um, uh, because alcohol and water dissolve in each other. Okay, where is the sample from? Okay, so this sample with the sand is uh, from northern Germany. And the other sample over here is uh, one that I collected from a lo local small river today in the afternoon. Um, also some, um, yeah, something from the ground. So there, therefore there is a little bit of sand already here. Um, and I did not try this yet. Okay, <clears throat> so um, I don't know what to expect. So, um, so it's a little bit um, also um, yeah, uh, an uncertainty factor for me. So what I'm going to do now is I can put this away now. And uh, I'm going to spin it again uh, for a couple of minutes. So I'm going to, for this reason, switch over again to the centrifuge view. I'm going to put it in again and uh, let's uh, get started again. Ah, where's the plastic tube? Here it is. Yeah, by the way, um, the, this one over here, I have to move the microphone over. So this one over here, that is the speed, uh, and this one is the timer. So. And here we go again. Uh, needs to... have the centrifuge view here. The interesting thing with the centrifuge is, is that while it spins, it seems to create a small vacuum. Therefore, the lid is kind of sucked down on, on top. I'll just show you. Yeah, it, it's almost like, as if it were magnetic, but there is, seems to be some kind of a low pressure. Um, and uh, for this reason, it, it, it kind of sucks the lid down a little bit, okay? Okay, have you ever tried to prepare slides of diatomaceous earth? Yes, I have. And as a matter of fact, I made a video of this in my other YouTube channel some time ago. Um, uh, they are sold sometimes as supplement or plant additives. I'll show you something. Just a second. Wait a minute. I'm going to show you something. This is a diatomaceous earth, okay? Um, it's like a very fine powder, and uh, when you put it under the microscope, it also looks kind of nice. Again, a little bit because of the colors, that's why it looks a little bit transparent, but I've uh, tried this um, um, as well, yeah? Um, <laughs> boy, I am going to have to buy a centrifuge, anything else? Um, I would say a, a centrifuge is not absolutely necessary, but it's nice to have, okay? Um, because um, it does allow, allow you to concentrate samples and it gives you an additional thing to play around with, um, of course. Uh, but uh, it is also possible um, to simply let the sample stand for some time, okay? Um, and then um, uh, some of the organisms will actually settle down. It takes a few hours sometimes. And some of the organisms, however, they will float to the top because they want to go towards uh, the oxygen. Um, so yeah, the centrifuge does have a certain advantages, okay? But it is also possible to concentrate them by waiting a little bit and wait um, for it to settle down. But then again, this only works for the larger ones, okay? How much RPM do you need to participate precipitate cells? Well, this one here has 4,000. And it works, okay? Um, so it might not be fast enough maybe to pre pre precipitate maybe maybe uh, a, a certain bacteria or so, but it works fine. Um, so for um, separating, um, yeah, water life, it, it's, it's okay, yeah? So, and uh, it also depends a little bit on the, on, this, um, on the spinning time, yeah? So I'm just going to wait a little bit more. I'm going to turn down the LEDs here, okay? Uh, a, a blender motor, yep. Replace microphone to original position. You're, you're, you're yelling for no reason. Okay, is it too loud maybe? Okay, I see that it, 
is indeed too loud just a second maybe it's better now I'm, I, I turned down the volume a little bit okay so I hope that maybe the sound is a little bit better now it could also be that uh, yeah the noise of the, the centrifuge added I wonder what the difference between that measures earth for water filtration and for gardening I don't know that's an interesting question okay so so let's see mm -hmm. what else do we have seen from desk again um, in the meantime I'm going to prepare um, a sand slide so that, so that you can better compare how the original sample looks like compared to the centrifuge one okay so I need to quickly rinse this again So, um, a cover glass goes on top. So this is uh, the not centrifuged specimen with the sand. And this way, um, I just want to show it to you now that the sand uh, actually, yeah, is kind of a little, looks nice, but it's a little bit distracting. So switch over to the microscope view. Yep, looks nice. Yeah. But and but if you look now there where there is no sand. Okay. Um going to use the arrow now um, all, all over here. Yeah, this is uh, where um yeah, we would uh, yeah, hopefully be able to see some uh, some diatoms and, and so on. But you see, it is not quite as concentrated as I hope it to be. Yeah. Um, so it might take quite a bit of time for you to find something of interest. Okay. Yeah. So just uh, as a little reference, somehow um, the non-concentrated, the non-centrifuged water looks like. Yeah. And. Uh, then uh, after centrifuging um, yeah the sand uh, particles are not there the sand grains are not there but uh, I hope uh, to be able to see uh, this uh, yeah the water here a little bit in um, under more concentration okay so and uh, do you have any idea for separating different algae species I've tried micro manipulating it and worked kind of well but not very efficiently oh species algae species well um hmm. no no idea because uh, uh, I, I, normally in microbiology what i have done is is uh, for separating bacteria i, I plated them on uh, on medium and i know that some algae are also able to grow on certain um, certain plates on certain nutrient media and, and then maybe you can have individual algal colonies yeah, but I think it might be a little bit difficult to make some algae actually grow on a plate. But I know that some algae will actually do that. But in, in, uh, with bacteria, that's actually the, the standard procedure. That's how you separate, it, separate them. Um, yeah. yeah, so this is basically, I don't know. I don't know if it's been spinning now long enough or not. Um, I'm just going to give it a try. Okay. And uh, let, let's see if we already have a pellet or not. So I hope that this is now going to um, I, maybe I can switch up a little bit the sound. Okay, so let's uh, go for it. So here we go. Um, the desk view again. So we the sand sample has a huge pellet over here, and even here. Uh, 
not quite on the bottom but uh, here on the side there is uh, some deposit so I hope that uh, yeah, this one is actually that we're able to see something here so I quickly carefully have to remove this one first so um, because I don't know if um, this is pellet is not going to start going into suspension very quickly so let's quickly take it off um, I in the past I also tried to simply pour off the liquid the supernatant but this uh, then also sometimes caused the pellet to be flushed out and I don't want that of course I don't know I'm not very optimistic about this one here I have to be very honest that because whatever I see here is not a lot but um, and then again for microscopy you sometimes don't need a lot got to be very careful now Be a little bit careful. Uh, a small drop I want to leave in there. So well, there is well, oh, there actually is a pellet here. Okay, uh, yeah. so let's uh, try to resuspend this. And uh, yeah, let's uh, find a. slide and let's go for it okay something is visible usually there is the saying is, is if you are able to see something uh, without a microscope then of course you're definitely able to see something with a microscope it's kind of obvious so is this one or two cover glasses it's two okay So let's have, let's let's have a look. Suspension, uh, the suspense increases. So um, let's remove this here. Which one was this again? This was was the was this the one from the from the stream from today? I don't remember. Go up a little bit here. Uh huh. What do we see here? Some green stuff, algae, of course. There is some movement going on because I think the water still spreads a little bit. Ah, yeah, so I see some diatoms here. That's fine. Yeah. So, yes. And uh, yeah, that's basically how it looks like. And plenty of diatoms. They're still a little bit too small. Here is a larger one. Yeah, I've seen this one already before. This is the well, what, 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 what is something interesting going on here? Was there some movement here? What is this? Well, this guy also seemed to have survived the centrifuging process, but I don't... Is it a rotifer or I have no idea? A worm hiding there? Yeah, I, I go, I'll go up a little bit with... Uh, some kind of a ciliate, I guess. Okay, I'll go up a little bit uh, with the magnification to with the 40 times. Turn up the light a little bit. Yeah, and some beautiful diatoms here. Yeah, that's basically what I expected. What is this again? Kind of hiding. Up. Ah, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, beautiful diatom shells. Oh, I have I have an arrow over here. So yeah, these are yeah, they're, they're not green, so they're already dead. That's only the silica shell that's kind of left over. Um, some diatoms have uh, the green chloroplast still visible in there, okay, um, and they're still alive. Yeah. What is? You have to refocus a little bit. What is this here? Yep. Also some diatoms here. Yeah, this one is also uh, still green here. Yeah, green here. Yeah, also some over here. I have to refocus. Yep, so that's basically how it works. Okay. Yep. So a, a couple of comments again. I believe that very large centrifuges are being used to by jet pilots and astronauts to practice. Yes, the G-forces, that's important. I, I go up a little bit. Uh, 
and could Inkdal be centrifuged and separated? I don't think so. Are colloids or are they dissolved in solution? Well, um, let's put it this way. There are certain calligraphy inks uh, that are used and th that these are actually soot particles. So basically carbon particles. And then there is the regular fountain pen ink and that is dissolved. So it's dissolved in water and then you're not able to separate it. But if these are actual particles, then you should be able to separate it. Yeah? Um, you can separate ink dyes using paper chromatography, yes. Um, um, and this uh, chromatography, however, separates them by, um, by, uh, by a different solubility. Okay, and uh, yeah. Um, I'm looking for literature to identify bacteria and or fungi. The book, das Leben, is not detailed enough for me. That is correct. Uh, the Leben im Wassertropfen, this book, is not suitable for bacteria because you cannot identify bacteria based on microscopic observation. It's a general principle uh, because um, um, the morphology, the shape of the bacteria does not tell you what it is. In other words, very similarly shaped bacteria can be very distantly related and bacteria that are look different can be very genetically very similar okay so this is a fundamental issue ah look at this guy up here <laughs> um, so that's a fundamental issue for this reason um, and the biodiversity of bacteria is so large that it does not make sense anyway to uh, try to identify bacteria i mean there are a few bacteria that you can um, basically um, where you can limit it. So for example, if you have, if it's an aerobic bacterium, which is able to form endospores, it's probably bacillus, but it's all, yeah, and so on. So you, there are a few um, uh, ways that you, how you can reduce the possibilities, but generally for bacterial identification, um, no, it's there, the biodiversity is way too high and my microscopy is not suitable. Um, it, yeah, uh, you're just basically able to say that that's a bacterium, but you're in many cases not able to say which one. So that's, that's a little bit of an issue, okay? So that's basically this, the water sample that I uh, basically uh, collected today. Um, yeah, I have some other algae over here. Yeah. And uh, so you see, um, it makes uh, finding specimens much easier this way because there's simply more um, in a small droplet and you have to look around less. So uh, I would like to now try the other one. Uh, where's the other one? Ah, yeah, that's the, the sand sample. Okay, so I have to again, uh, I would like to rinse my pipette. And now let's try the sand sample. I hope that uh, this is actually the one I'm, I'm mo most interested in. Okay. I have to be very careful because the pellet starts to become loose. And uh, we can still expect a whole bunch of sa sand grains here. Um, so it might yeah, not be quite as clear either. So. Again, we leave a small drop of, of water. Mm, here is the pellet. Let's try to suspend it. So I think there might be still a lot of sand here. Okay, so um, I'll take again another fresh uh, microscope slide. Take a small drop. Ooh, that's very, very dense, very dense. Um. No, it's still, I think two, is this two? No, it's fine, it's one. Ooh. Okay, well, um, let's have a look. It's always one of the things that you never really know exactly what to expect. It makes everything interesting. <laughs> so let's put this away. too bright. Okay, well, yeah, I do see a couple of sand grains. It's pretty dense. Let's go up 40 times. It's 
more light let's have a look let's go so again for those of you just joined uh, this is a sand sample where I dissolved it uh, in a little bit of uh, salt water I let the sand sa uh, settle down and that's basically the part the floating part yeah, so to say and I tried this in the morning and I was able to indeed find some a few marine diatoms which are circular but I don't know if you're I'm, I'm so lucky this time Maybe I still have to go up a little bit with the magnification because maybe they're a little too small and it is better. Okay. Things like this also allow you to find a little bit uh, things. Uh, some people actually search for microplastics this way in sand. But honestly, a lot of irregularly shaped structures. But I was a little bit luckier today in the morning. Hmm. Well, well, well. Could I use methylene blue um, on this sample? Somebody's asking. Of course, I could do that, but it will not always stain everything equally. I could try that. Yeah, okay. Here are some interesting structures as well. Yeah. But it could be that some of the um, diatom shells are indeed um, because of the continuous wave actions on the also break down, of course, and, and erode. So you have to be a little bit uh, patient uh, until you're able to find something here. Yeah. Hmm. Well. Yeah, here. Ah, I found, I found, I found something. This one over here. And that's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll point to this. Okay. Uh, this thing here. That is. That's a, the silica shell of a diatom. Okay. This one over there. Uh, probably not alive anymore because it's not green anymore. Because uh, when they're green and they still contain a chloroplast, then they might be still alive. Should have kept the sample from today in the morning uh, because there was, ah, here could be another one, a large one. Yeah. Because I did find a, a nice round one. Uh, unfortunately, or maybe this one is also a diatom shell. Here we see one down here. Yeah. I hope you get the idea. Okay. Yep. But honestly, yeah, I probably have to. What you can do is, is the following. You can, uh, here are some diatom shells as well. Here's a small one. Um, generally, what you can do is, is you can resuspend the pellet in, in, in liquid again, in some water, and then you centrifuge it again. And you do this a couple of times. And this kind of washes the, yeah, it washes the, the specimen and this way you can also remove uh, certain unwanted uh, unwanted particles and by adding salt you can uh, change of course the concentration uh, the density uh, of the liquid and this way you can of course also uh, maybe separate different uh, sp specimens based on their density here's another shell and here's another one over here and this might be a few sand grains that are left over but uh, I think uh, compared to the previous slide where uh, I put it directly, uh, the sand water directly on the microscope slide, you see that indeed um, it's easier this way to see more. Um, here's another one more. Um, yeah, at, at the same time. Okay. Yep. But um, I would like to put again, which, uh, which one was it? I don't know which one it was. Okay. Let's have a quick look at the, let's have a quick look at the other one again. Yeah, I think this was the one from before. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you see that uh, there are actually uh, more of them that are green um, because uh, 
this was a fresh sample. The other one uh, basically was still standing around for almost half a year on my windowsill, but that's the one uh, from the water sample from today in the afternoon. And you see that uh, many of them are actually much more alive. There are yeah, many more um, diatoms uh, that are green over here. Okay. Okay, folks, uh, what time is it now? Um, I've been, oh, aha, uh -huh, one hour and 14 minutes again. Here, also a nice diatom. Yeah, so that was uh, basically a quick uh, intro into using a centrifuge, okay? Um, hope that you liked the whole thing. If you have any further questions, of course, I'm willing to spend a few more minutes uh, to answer any further questions. Um, why bacterial cells don't get lysis regardless of using 95% alcohol? Um, the thing is the following, um, for disinfecting, uh, um, and if you want to kill bacteria, you use 70% alcohol. And the reason why you use 70% alcohol is, is because this corresponds best to the solubility of the cell membrane of the plasma membrane of the bacteria. Um, so um, if you use uh, alcohol that is too concentrated, then the uh, membrane will not dissolve as well. And for this reason, 70% alcohol actually works better than um, higher percentages. Yeah? Um, I also heard that if you use higher percentages alcohol for the disinfecting, then this actually will pull away the water. It will withdraw the water from the bacterial cells. Um, and this might actually make them more stable. The cell membrane will shrink then um, and uh, it will apparently make the cell more stable. But what you want is you want the cell bursting and this works best apparently with 70% alcohol. Okay. Um, will centrifuging seeds affect the germination rate? Well, um, in other words, that's an interesting one. Um, it will high G forces uh, destroy the cells? Um, I think uh, you can do, well, I think, uh, haven't they done similar experiments already in the space shuttle at zero G where there is actually no gravity at all? Um, so I don't know about the germination rate, whether this has an impact or not, um, but uh, of course gravity has an important uh, impact on the growth of roots because it's called a geotropism where roots grow towards the center of the earth. So I don't know if it actually has, uh, it, yeah, if it impacts germination rate, then this actually would mean that it would destroy maybe some of the seeds, which of course I can imagine can happen if the G forces are very high. Okay. Um, is it still the Olympus CH40? It looks like you're using a different objectives. This one is not the Olympus CH40. It's uh, the BX53, and I still have the CH40. Okay. And uh, yeah. Uh, some people joining in. <laughs> Hello from Tennessee. Unfortunately, uh, I'm now pretty much at the at the end of this live stream. If you joined in late, I, I do a microscopy live stream every Saturday um, at the same time. And if you want to see the beginning of this video, uh, because you joined in late, the video is of course uh, going to be available online um, after um, afterwards. And uh, of course, also all of the comments uh, will be available online and you can of course post some additional comments as well. Um, if there are certain suggestions or wishes that you have uh, for, for me to put things under the microscope, then please uh, post them or write me an email. I'll try to prepare something then. Yeah, and uh, yeah, for today, I just wanted to show you a little bit the uses of a centrifuge because maybe many microscopists, hobby microscopists might not be familiar with one. Um, I think, as I mentioned before, I think it's not an absolutely a necessity to have one. Uh, but if you have one, it's uh, yeah, it's nice to have. And I did not spend a lot of money on this one that I have here on, on the side. It's also not uh, the most fancy device. Maybe I can I can show you a little bit how it looks from the front. Okay, just a second. So that's uh, yeah. This was timer and uh, and speed. And uh, if you are interested in, I've actually taken it apart. Uh, there is a different video, uh, yeah, uh, linked below where I get to a little review of this here. Okay. Um, let, very quickly, the last comments. Okay. Um, do you have any tips uh, for preparing permanent slides? Uh, I'm running through the problems. Um, yeah, of after a couple of hours of air bubbles appear. Air bubbles are a problem. Um, it depends a lot on the type of mounting medium that you use. 
um, for making permanent slides. Um, I know that uh, some uh, mounting media are more easily used uh, or can be used more easily than others. Um, if you want to make uh, permanent slides yourself um, and just for experimental purposes, then you can use also clear glue. It's called Elmer's glue. I've uh, uh, experimented with that. It's uh, also known as PVA glue, Elmer's glue. And uh, this I found does not make a lot of bubbles. Okay, and it's water-based uh, and it, I think it's uh, nice to use uh, for, for hobby purposes. Yeah? Um, I think it's from the solvent of the mounting media slowly evaporating. It's not, yes, that could be one thing and also some mounting media like to shrink when they, when they basically dry and when they shrink then basically they will form bubbles because air is being pulled in. Okay, um, so I suggest that if you that you try to allow the mounting medium to evaporate first a little bit before you put on the cover glass, kind of to make it a little bit thicker, um, so that there is less shrinkage happening. Um, so this could also be a reason. So it could also be that the bubbles basically are, so of course, uh, yeah, when the solvent evaporates, and it can also of course form uh, vapor bubbles as well. Okay, season's greetings. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, there are some, some spam comments as well in here. How is this possible? I wonder if red blood cells can be separated from white blood cells. Um, that's an interesting one. Depends on the density, really, I guess. Okay. And spam comments. How is this possible? Okay. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I wish you, um, I think I'm just going to leave it at that uh, for today. I uh, hope that you liked the live stream again. Um, I wish you all the best. Um, happy microbe hunting as always. And uh, see you around next time, hopefully next week again. Okay. Um, okay. All the best and bye-bye. And